a massive thank you to Zeno, REI, Aaron, Stephen, and Casey for subscribing to the channel. If you're already featured in these clips, make sure you subscribe down below. Hello everyone, and welcome back guys to round 19 of season 3 of the F1 2021 My Team Career Mode. Yesterday, we head back to Albert Park, two races to go of the season. And of course, if you missed out on the video a couple of days ago where we went to Brazil... Arguably, race of the game so far in F1 2021. I'm not trying to overhype that one bit. It is definitely a race to go back and check out. Of course, we've driven around Imola as well on F1 2021. I can confirm that will be, of course, coming to our Season 4 calendar as well. There are exciting times ahead of us at the moment. Of course, get your votes in as well over on the Community tab for who you guys want to see as our engine supplier ready for the next season as a while there but plenty to go into uh, before this weekend now I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to save up as many R&D points as possible and then when we get to Abu Dhabi we're going to spend them all there so we've actually got 2700 at the moment but championship wise three points between Hamilton and Lando Norris technically now just three drivers left in the hunt for the championship there Charles Leclerc one point too far out now to walk away with it. McLaren pretty much, uh, yeah, basically guaranteed uh, to wrap up the constructors here today, unless Yuki Tsunoda pulls out a worldie as well there. But we're looking pretty good in P5 there. I think uh, Sainz and Tsunoda can definitely still jump us if we have a tailspin towards the end of the year. But yeah, let's dive in then to the Australian Grand Prix. As always, though, heading back to Albert Park is a rather sobering experience on F1 2021. There, the AI and just the practice program so OP, it's actually unbelievable around this track. We needed to improve on that. I just got no idea where the AI sort of find the pace they've got, but yeah, as well, I'm a bit worried about the engine, to be honest. We've got quite a few parts that are pretty worn out at this stage of the year. Their control electronics ICE are the two most notable ones. So we might have to take some grid penalties, to be honest, this weekend. Start from the back and then obviously have just no worries in the final two races of the year there. And I think around really this track and Abu Dhabi as well. Obviously both quite power orientated. I think having just a mighty fast race car down the straights would definitely be useful. Yeah, and I think the fact we can't even do any of the race programs shows how much we need some fresh no components. We needed to improve on that. I'm desperately trying, Jeff, but we just haven't got enough. All right, yeah, I think we're just going to have to take some penalties. Fresh engine in the back of the car. I'm really trying to get this race underway. They're not quite what I wanted to do here, but I think it's the lesser of two evils. I'd rather do this thing in a power failure, either here or in the final race of the year in Abu Dhabi. Welcome to the Australian Grand Prix in Melbourne for what no doubt will be an intense day of racing. The Melbourne circuit is certainly one that needs to be taken seriously. Its combination of slippery surfaces and difficult corners make it a tricky track when it comes to overtakes. Drivers find it hard to pass and will need to take full advantage of those DRS zones if they want to have any hope of breaking through. It's race day yet again and joining me for a chat, Anthony Davidson. And our racers are certainly in for a rough day today. What will you be watching for as they go down into turn one? Well, the start of the race is always one of the most nerve-wracking parts. You have to hope that everyone is able to get off to a clean start. And this is possibly the trickiest part of the entire race. So many drivers in such a small space and finding your breaking point into turn one as well. It's a testament to the driver's skill that there aren't more incidents. It's time to see how our drivers are stacking up after yesterday's exciting qualifying session. An immense lap from Lewis Hamilton yesterday puts him on pole position and Yuki Tsunoda completes the front row. As we continue through the rest of the grid today, we have Perez, Sainz, Jensen Button and Norris, Gasly, Joe, Leclerc and George Russell, Verstappen, they've taken a grid penalty, Stroll, Nikita Mazepin and Bottas, Latifi, Giovinazzi, Christian Lundgaard and Mr. Monaco. Ocon, they'll be starting further back after an earlier grid penalty. Ricardo, Mick Schumacher and Robert Schwartzman. Now, it's almost time for lights out, so let's go down to the track. 
Right, well, here we are then, on the grid, ready for the penultimate race of the year here. Gonna or try and opt for a medium to soft, because the threat of rain is meant to emerge later on. Maybe, just maybe, we'll see a race just like we did last time round at Brazil. You know, we, we came from the back then to win. Two in a row? Is, is that a bit too cheeky, a bit too optimistic? Who really knows? We'll have to wait and see here today. But yeah, fingers crossed that we can get a good start to this one. Uh, yes, like I said, starting on the mediums, though, is going to be difficult. Daniel Ricciardo's long shot chance at a World Championship basically seems over uh, before it's even begun at his home Grand Prix. But you never know what the Australian might be able to achieve in the land down under. Ready, though, on the grid for round 19 of the year for the Australian Grand Prix. Five red lights, and it is going to be lights out, and away we go. Not off to the best start in the world. There is everyone around us, of course, starting on the soft compounded tyres. But as we head down towards Term 1, just going to try and make it through clean and tidy. Then make sure we try and stay ahead of both of the Haas cars. As Mick Schumacher trying to come at us on the exit of Turn 1. Up the inside of four cars in towards Turn 3, though. We'll be very, very cheeky there. Three wide on the exit. Got to try and give the two guys on our inside a bit of room there. Oh, there's a bit of Constantina and up. Lungard gets squeezed in the middle. Between myself and Nicholas Satifi there off the start. But we are in the P16 of the Grand Prix. So we've had a good little start actually in the end there. As why is the engine warning light still on? The team haven't put the new parts on the car. Okay, we're monitoring somewhere on the ICE. Be aware that we will start to see a lot of power. Why is this still a glitch on F1 2021? I know the old thing was if you made sure you didn't obviously skipped to the end of the session it would still work but we sat through the rest of qualifying uh free practice even and the game still hasn't put the new parts on the car there Bottas going to slowly caught a behind off on that we'll quickly slide past him whilst all this is going on but now we are potentially in a world of hurt because we did we deliberately started this race on the back to get fresh components on and now we've just got to try and slice and dice our way through with a completely worn out engine that could theoretically go at any point during this Grand Prix. Australia has not been a favourable track for me on F1 2021 so far, and today it doesn't appear like it's going to be any different. Whoa! Oh. <laughs> okay, clear. Quite a new zone's just been deleted from the Grand Prix. There, we're going to dive straight in. If it is it a VSC? Oh, like it's a VSC. Oh, it is a full safety car. Slow down and maintain a positive delta. What am I Being doing? An incident resulting in a high level of debris on the track. We've been informed that due to the increasing risks, they're moving from a virtual to a full safety car. <sighs> we we just can't catch a break and we're only three laps in. Come on, Ricardo, we can go past the safety car, thank you. I was gonna pit in, because I thought, great, we'll just get that out of the way. But Apparently not. To be honest, I think actually it's not such a bad idea staying out there. But we just gifted Ricardo P14 in the Grand Prix. Had it been real life, we would have probably got penalty as well there. But F1, I mean, it, it screwed us enough so far this Grand Prix. But yeah, not not the ideal start. Are we going to see a lot of the front runners in though? That's a very different question. Well, getting ready to go green then once more here in Australia. And just thinking, this could well be McLaren's first constructors championship in 25 years in Formula 1 as well there. But Hamilton and Sonoda I think are going to do everything within their power to try and stop that this weekend. They're still running 1-3 and three in this Grand Prix. Though. I think Sergio Perez between them actually in this race at the moment. But getting ready to go green once again here in Albert Park. Absolutely love that at the final corner. Back end of the car there really just completely tried to go round on us. We have somehow kept him pointing in the right direction as we head back down into our ward cell one. But definitely not ready. What is going on with the car? There's no reason the balance should be that far out of the restart there. And we have only lost the one place somehow. But a lot of time and a lot of confidence. All over the back though of Valtteri Bottas at the end of the lap. Though a little bit more heat in the rubber this time round. As we head out of the final corner, but are we going to be able to get close enough to yeah, the fin? Teammate ahead is 5.9 seconds. Start finish straight just isn't long enough here at Albert Park, but as long as we get a good run out of turn one, we might be able to go for a bit of a dive in towards turn three. There we are gaining on the Williams. Bottas isn't really going to do much to defend it. Yes, he is. Late on the brakes there, swipes across me. Absolutely having none of that 
is the Finn. But we just can't do anything. It feels like early on in this Grand Prix there. Again, we get all over the back of him on the exit of the corner. To the inside we go. Unusual overtaking place, but we'll make it work. And now four Good seconds. Nice the gap to Daniel Ricciardo at the road. At least the team likes that. We got more yellow flags out. Someone else got issues here in the Grand Prix. It is Nikita Mazepin. How has he binned it there? Well, Bryden on board then with Nikita Mazepin through the final couple of corners of the lap then. What's he managed to do? Oh, he managed to do what I did, but even worse. J just Mazepin things, I suppose. How did he keep that out of the wall as well? That was almost, almost not a completely embarrassing moment. Oh, first cars into the pits. Yuki Sonoda in at the end of lap nine. They're a bit early in the Grand Prix, but I think the Saders know what they're doing. We're expecting rain in around 10 to 15 minutes. I have exactly zero idea how we held on to that, but I think I'm just going to try and style it out. The balance of the car were all over the place still. There we go, a load more cars in at the end of lap 10. Hamilton going out onto our hearts. Keep it up. Just about to stay out ahead of the Merc, so he must be going to the end of this GP. But we are now, well, in the net lead of the Grand Prix for now, I suppose. Now we're going to see most of the last cars into the pits, so a lot more of them in still. The Stroll, Verstappen, Sainz all in, but Button? He's on a set of hards. What is our teammate Jensen Button doing in this Grand Prix? And could it potentially work? There we go, Russell and Perez into the pits there, which does just leave us with, I think, Pierre Gasly and our teammates. Hello, Perez! Perez might be about to come out in the lead here as we try and do the up and under on the new white Red Bull here as we head out of the first couple of corners. It's a drag race between myself and Sergio down towards turn three. I'll be able to keep the nose up the inside. A very, very aggressive move, but we do get ahead of Sergio Perez there as Button and Gasly still out front, but that move might be key in this Grand Prix because the teams don't reckon it's long until the rain arrives here and if we can get to that period we can have a real advantage here what I don't want is the likes of Perez Sonoda and Hamilton closing up on Button on his old rubber and potentially being able to capitalise so we're playing the team role here by going for that move and now we've just got to try and keep these guys at bay Sonoda I'm going to look at the inside oh a little bit of contact we certainly won't want to budge there for the young Japanese drivers this team now saying rain 10 15 minutes away. Like the problem is terminal. They're retiring the car. And Lungard now out of the Grand Prix as well. But yeah, 15 minutes is not ideal. That's about 10 11 laps away. Be right at the very end Caution. of Caution. this race. And that would, yeah, not be good for us. Because, yeah, no idea what's happened to Lungard. Seems like an engine failure, though. Sonoda again trying it down around the outside at the end of the second straight away. Again, giving him a big old squeeze and again, not willing to back down. Sonoda again looking for it. Again, another dive at the end of the second straight away. This time, Amber on the outside gives us the inside for turn four. Only a couple more laps for I think we're just going to have to pit in this Grand Prix. Team wants to go on to softs on lap 20. Might have to pit one or two earlier than that. But we've done pretty well on these mediums, I think. Oh, there we go. Sonoda in at the end of lap 18. So we're definitely going to have to box at the end of the next one. Try and make sure the young Japanese driver doesn't get much of an undercut on us. Of course, he'll be going back onto a set of softs, I would imagine, for the end of the Grand Prix. Maybe another set of mediums actually saying that. But we are going to box okay, the end of this one. Cap to JB, though, has really come down over the last few. As I think those hard tyres just aren't working anymore. Well, about to come into the pits then at the end of lap 19. Sonoda, the real question is now is how much has he jumped as far as no buttons come in? Oh! Jensen is in the pits. Jensen in the pits. We've had to do that for a second there time then in this Grand Prix. Track, but officials aren't looking to push for a safety car right now. Just be careful. No idea what Perez is doing back in towards turn one there, but we do hold on now oh, to the lead. Lap, so push now. Here in Australia, but yeah, I was just about to pit in there. No idea why the game notified us so late as well. But now we're going to have to do the extra lap in this race on these mediums. There is where is Sonoda going to re-emerge? I think there's a huge train of cars, actually, in the lower end of the top ten there. Ferrari and McLaren battling it out at the front of that little group. But maybe, yeah, we can have an absolute sweat fest late on, trying to close our way back through the order. But yeah, we're now going to have to box the end of lap 20. Looks like rain is inbound, and we're expecting it in around five minutes. Five minutes that, till the rain. 
that's not what we want to hear as well. It'll rain in about in about five minutes, but to be fair, if we're going on to a set of fresh softs, we're certainly going to have the grip. Right, well, I take two then at coming into the pits at the end of this lap to finish off this very, very long and interesting stint on a set of the mediums. Sorry, I thought Perez was coming in behind us, but apparently not. Okay, shall we get the car slowed down there? Perez and Hamilton going to duke it out for the lead. Are we going to see a white Red Bull on top for the first time in this series? And how many of these cars are going to come flooding past us as well as we head into the box? Come on, we need a quick stop. 2.3 isn't too bad. You can see a lot of guys on the hards, though. Gasly and Button on their mediums. There's Russell Stroll. Let's get some and there goes Sonoda as well. So we're only into P13. But basically, yeah, where we were... When all these guys started their pit windows, but now we're going to be mighty fast towards the end. And if the drizzle comes, we don't want full rain, we just want a bit of drizzle. There's going to be a few of us, they're going to be a lot quicker than the guys on destroyed hards as Sonoda and Stroll already battling. Right, Stroll on Sonoda then as we come towards the end of the back straight. No, Sonoda not going for a move that turn round. And we've just got so much more grip than the pair of them as we head through the final couple of corners of the lap. Look at the run, we've got Sonoda. Oh, Sonoda, I think, looked for a move on that stroll there. It's around the outside we go through the penultimate corner there. We get a warning for a collision, but I absolutely do not care at this stage of the Grand Prix. Sonoda has been dispatched of, and he was the one I was really worried about. So it shouldn't be long before we're all over the back of JB as well here, as there is such a big train of cars. Stroll, though, goes defensive on ourselves. We've already gone around the outside of one. Can we make it two? Oh, a little bit of contact there as Stroll tried to wash out towards me. But we do make the move work. And now up to 11th. Russell separates us in points. Come on then, George Russell. Show me what you got as we head out of the final corner here. Activate the ERS. DRS as well. As we head back down towards uh, one fast lap of the Grand Prix. Dipping into the 19s. And clean around the outside of him we go. Was Button? No! Not again for Jensen Button. More heartbreak for our teammate. What can he do to catch a break late on this year? And this is why we want to go away from Renault Power at the end of the season. Three engine failures in the last four Grand Prix by the look of it. Button, I'm heartbroken for our teammate who really yeah, has put up a massive championship charge against myself this season. But he's going to have nothing to show for it simply because Renault can't build an engine. We, however, have got other things to worry about still as we try and have a look past Daniel Ricciardo in this Grand Prix. Looks like he is out of this championship hunt at the yes, moment. Dropped out of the race. We're going to try and relegate in one more position there up the inside of Ricciardo through the fast cane. And up into eighth we go. Oh, and there we go. Rain now has started to appear in Albert Park. Are we going to see one final twist in this race? Again, the likes of Gasly and myself should be rapid. But Charles Leclerc and Carlos Sainz sat in front of young Pierre. He has been on fire all day. And are we going to see a move up the inside of Carlos Sainz? Oh, he's looking for it. But Sainz having absolutely none of that. And Gasly gets forced off line. Are we going to be able to get a run on the exit of the corner? We definitely still are, Jeff. Up the inside of Pierre we go. A lot more confidence is the drizzle. Now starting to form into proper rain as well. Are we going to see anyone move to Inters before the end of this? We surely are not going to be the first ones to make that call, I don't think. But, more important things. We've got two Scarlet Ferraris just in front of us. Is that the final corner? We go look at the extra traction on Carlos Sainz to the Ferrari. Though he's got some oomph down the straights to the outside. In the end there, it's Sainz adamant he's getting to that apex. But we don't need it. We'll go clean around the outside. And we'll move up into P6 now. Charles Leclerc. Barely in front of us as well. There's Lando Norris trying to hang on to any championship hopes in P4. As Hamilton still duking it out for the race lead. But look at this. Look how much grip we've got over Charlotte Close defending this way and that. As we head in towards the middle sector. Just parking it in front of us. Oh, at the moment. As that was the first sort of proper kicker wheel spin. Oh, we almost Maldonado'd it. Almost. Come on then, Charles Leclerc. Let's try and get a run on the Ferrari. I really do wonder whether intermediates are going to be the tire to be on this. Look at that. Final corner. Charles Leclerc not able to get the power down. And we're clean ahead of him before we can get back to the start-finish line. It's on to lap 26. Just four laps to go. But now we need to make a conscious effort to start breaking a bit earlier into the corners. All right. We're getting very close to the crossover point now. Stay out if you have the pace. But as soon as you hit the limit... 
come and put the inters on. The gap to the car ahead is 1.5 seconds. And I think that's pretty clear from the team there. They're not happy on this rubber now, but we are still taking so much time out of guys that have been much quicker than us throughout most of this race. Got blue flags out for Robert Schwartzman. We got a big run on Lando Norris down in towards the final sector. Up the inside we go. It's a big well, dive. The stewards have now disabled DRS. DRS is now disabled. It's DRS now disabled in this race. We're seeing some of the front runners in. Verstappen and Perez have stayed out there. Hamilton's come in. The team haven't told us to box in, but I think we're going to have to here. I just don't think it's worth it. And now we could finish net P2 in the Grand Prix. I'll make sure we get it slowed down enough. Because Verstappen and Perez surely are going to lose time hand over fist on this lap here. Could we quite possibly scrape a big result out of nowhere here in Albert Park? On to the ins as we go. Two seconds as well. You love to see that. But now the big question is where is Perez and Verstappen going to appear? No more scheduled pit stops. Carlos Sainz is going to be a good reference marker for us. Came out the pits about 17 seconds behind him. And now that gap is down to 13-12. It's absolutely plummeting at the moment, so it was definitely the right call to box when we have. But, I mean, Verstappen, yeah, it was a good 17 seconds up the road. So it's going to be a tall order to try and get round him, but not impossible. It's looking on the mini-map. One of the Red Bulls, that must be Verstappen. Verstappen staying out for another lap here. So clearly Red Bull don't want to stack the pits. And is Verstappen going to try and make it to the end? I mean, it might work for him. No, I think he's been there through turn one. Verstappen has gone for the hero play, but I think he's bottled it. Even on board then with Max on mediums. And yeah, he's, he's just got absolutely nothing at the moment there. Verstappen round and we could be on for a podium. And out of the final corner here, Sykes and Gasly. But both, of course. No, so Gasly stayed out as well. Why is Gasly still out there at the moment? We're going to be up into P5 of the race. But surely Gasly and Verstappen... Aren't going to be able to make it to the end there. Gasly only nine seconds up the road, but that is just coming down. Again, hand over fist there. As Perez now right behind Hamilton still. Verstappen just going backwards here. You kind of wonder at this point whether they may as well just hang out there to the end. They've sort of dug their hole. They may as well bury themselves in it as well as one of the Alfa Romeos gets out of the way. But yeah, it can't be long before we pass those two as well. And look at this as we head into the final lap. Of the Grand Prix, they're Gasly trying to push past Max Verstappen in this race. Are either of them going to box? No. They are going to stay out to the end of the Grand Prix. And it immediately doesn't look like it's going to work for him. Straight past Gasly. Verstappen as well. As we head back down to our cell. One there. One more lap to go. Of the Australian Grand Prix there. And Verstappen, yeah, no way he's going to be able to match us in a breaking battle there. No idea why he went off line. I'll be honest, but yeah, heartbreak for the pair of them as Gasly now might again look for a move on Verstappen. Lando Norris, though, needs to tread carefully as he wants to get around the pair of them here, and I think he has just about done it. So we out of nowhere into P3 three laps of, fuel remaining. of the Australian Grand Prix there. I honestly thought after the opening few laps here, this was just going to be a race where we get to the end. Front is seconds. Try and pick up a few points and everything like that, but it does look like our podium streak is set to continue here. Five podiums in a row at this late stage of the campaign. It has really been a good run of form towards the end of Season 3, and I really hope we can maintain it as we head into Season 4. But come rain or shine, there's always one man who seems to end up finding himself right at the top of the Formula 1 world. Two seconds down on you. You might try and overtake if you make a mistake. Don't think he's going to get any opportunity in the final few corners here, but Lewis Hamilton comes through. It looks like he is going to win here in Australia. Looks like Verstappen has gone round as well for the second time in three races. Right at the end there and looks like he's going to completely drop out of the points towards the rear of the field there. But Hamilton comes through to take a crucial race victory. Retake the lead of the Drivers' World Championship as well. The Perez P2 myself P3. Lando Norris in fourth. What a race. Brilliant. Brilliant job mate. That's a fantastic podium. Super driving. Really strong pace. Very, very happy. So Mercedes have won it and what a great race it was. Anthony Davidson, what helped them deliver this result, do you think? It's a heroic effort for any drivers to race in conditions like these and seeing them fight their way to the front was very special indeed. 
they were able to find all the grip, all the good lines and had the confidence to get on the power to top it all off. That's what pushed them into first place here today. So after a magnificent race, we can now see the drivers making their way to the podium. Once again, it's the Silver Arrows who take top spot, a well-earned victory for Mercedes. So then, it's time to see how this result affects the Drivers' Championship. After an incredible performance, Lewis Hamilton secures the top spot in the Drivers' Championship. Let's focus on the driver of the day, Anthony Davidson. Who do you pick? I have to give it to Mr. Monaco. They fought so hard and had incredible pace at times, so I don't think anyone else did a better job today. With that result, McLaren can no longer be touched at the top of the table. They've had their ups and downs this season like all teams, but they've weathered the storm and come out on top. McLaren are world champions once again. And with that, we wrap up another weekend of motorsport. But with more races lined up, be sure to join us when we come back with more Formula One. Well, there we are then. Despite Lewis Hamilton's best efforts, McLaren, for the first time in 25 years, wrap up the Constructors' Championship in the world of Formula 1. They've had a rough old time in recent years. I don't think anyone can deny that. But Lando Norris and Daniel Ricciardo have been on it all season. And can they just get the cherry on top of the cake next time out in Abu Dhabi? We will have to wait and find out there. But Hamilton in the end of dominant display. Pole position didn't take fastest lap but did win the race by just under 6 seconds from Sergio Perez there. We came through 18th to 3rd with the fastest lap as well. They're rather happy with that one to beat out Lando Norris. Charles Leclerc, Sonoda and then Ricardo, Gasly, Russell and Lance Stroll rounding out your points finishes there. Sainz just missed out. Verstappen ended up P13 after that calamitous late race call there. And three drivers out in the end. Jensen Button, Christian Lungard and Guan Yu Zhou there. And yeah, heartbreak for all of them. Obviously Lungard and Button engine failures. Guan Yu Zhou getting deleted very, very early on in the Grand Prix as well there. But George Russell actually picked up a five second time penalty. Not sure how he managed that. But championship wise though, 10 between Lando Norris and Lewis Hamilton as they head into the title decider in Abu Dhabi. Lando Norris needs the win with the fastest lap, with Hamilton finishing P3 or lower. Hamilton just needs, yeah, to finish just behind Lando Norris, and he will be world champion as well. There are lots of permutations as we head into the final race of the year. Charles Leclerc could actually snatch P3 from Daniel Ricciardo as well, though he only needs to outscore him by seven points in the final race of the year there. Sonoda jumps sights, two points between them as we head into Abu Dhabi. We can't get any better than fifth, but we still could lose it to either Yuki Sonoda or Carlos Sainz if they have an absolute whirly. And we have a nightmare in the final race of the year there. Further down the order, no other changes. Constructors-wise, like we said, McLaren back on top in the world of Formula 1. It does look like most positions are basically secured now. McLaren guaranteed to win. Mercedes guaranteed P2. Ferrari, ourselves and Red Bull guaranteed our places in the top five there. Potentially room for change lower down, but it's going to require a miracle in the final race of the year there. But thank you all so much for watching this video. If you have enjoyed, do make sure you leave a like. Get yourself subscribed as well. And yeah, we'll be back for one final time in Season 3. We head to Abu Dhabi. You guys do not want to miss it. A massive thank you for the continued support from all our channel members. If you want to be featured in these end clips, make sure you click the join button down below. But yeah, once again, a massive thank you to the travesty, Patrick, Chuan, David, Ben, Aiden, F. Stathios, Kato, Sean, Johnny, McBlam, and Mighty Spork for becoming channel members. Their support is really, really appreciated.